writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since the Gutenberg Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the Right Pack. Welcome back to Right Pack Radio. This is your host, David Allen Lucas, author of various crazy things, um, articles on self-defense, and articles on writing fight scenes as well. And president of St. Louis Writers Guild. And with me today is my co-host... Kathleen Cayambe, paranormal romance author under the pen name Kaseka Nkita. Me Savage, author of Paranormal Erotic Romance and under the name Carrie Lee Williams, children's books. My name is Jennifer Stolzer. I'm a children's book author and illustrator. Uh, Brad R. Cook. I am the author of steampunk novels and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but uh, you find uh, Iron Horseman and Iron Zulu at your local bookstore or online at bradrcook.com. And I guess I'm going to have to steal your thunder if you're not going to toss it out there, because this will oh, be heard in plenty okay, of time. Okay, fine, we'll do that too. Yeah, I will also be speaking at the St. Louis Science Center on March 4th, Friday, March 4th, for their Science of Steampunk. Uh, do come out, we're going to be watching The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I'm going to be IMAX. talking about the Science of Steampunk, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So come on out, it's uh, the St. Louis Science Center's first Fridays uh, in March. Lots I think it starts at... for children... Great, and it's free! Yes. And it starts about 6 p.m. or 6.30? Yeah, mm-hmm. events yeah. start about 6 o'clock. Yep. And it go, goes on There'll be on Nerf dueling and, you know, cosplayers and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And then I speak later that night. Fedora Amos. I write Victorian whodunits, such as Jack the Ripper in St. Louis and soon to come out. Mayhem at Buffalo Bill's Wild West. I am also Vice President of Greater St. Louis Sisters in Crime. And I want to plug our contest for the month one last time because today is probably the very last day that you can enter. But you can still do it today, and it's easy to enter. You can find out all kinds of information at Right Back Radio on Facebook. (laughs) And in general, here is what it is. We are looking for people who love science fiction and science fantasy. Here's your opportunity to find out more about some of your favorite, favorite authors. Just find out when they were born, when they died, and where they were born. Give the name along with that information to the contest at Right Pack Radio, and you can find it at rightpackradio at gmail.com. Mail it to that address, and we will get it, and we will love you. Thank you very much. You can win a good prize, too. And are all the rules on the Facebook page? Oh, you bet they are. (laughs) Okay. I'm Melanie Claney, author of science fiction, fantasy, and nonfiction. Excellent. And today's topic is going to be fan fiction, pros, cons, and copyright. And unlike all my other um, panelists here, I have got to do my get out of jail, or otherwise known as CYA, disclaimer. Mm -hmm. The reason I have to do this is because, yes, I am a paralegal. And that is... The following should not be taken as legal opinion or legal advice. I am not an attorney. Anything which I say is considered to be strictly my opinion. If you are seeking legal advice, please contact an attorney who has passed the bar in your state and has a background in the um, subject matter in which you... Intellectual property. Right. Intellectual property or any other aspect of subject matter which you are seeking illegal advice from. Do not email me, do not contact me, do not telephone me in any way to ask for legal advice. I am not able to give it to you. I am not. I have not passed the bar. As before, this is all my opinion. Anything you hear come out of my voice, my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> so does this wow. mean that you're like a ghost lawyer because you're a paralegal? No, I'm a paralegal. Because you got paranormal. <laughs> I'm a paralegal. Can we call you so a- do you do ghost dun, law? Dun. <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> Paralegals. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you call them after you get caught by the Busters. Yeah. <laughs> David, I really need some help. The Ghostbusters got me last week. I swear it was a non-moving violation. Please can get I, me out of ghost jail. Here's here's some attorneys you can call. <laughs> some ghost attorneys. Yes, I really don't like don't, don't look good in prison garb. So, um, today, we, as before, we are going to talk about fan fiction, pros, cons, and copyright. We just wrote a little Ghostbusters fan fiction just yeah, now. Yeah, 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 sort of, yeah. Um... 
what's kind of brought this to the topic, this is something which we've talked about on the show before, and we've talked about having a full episode on it. Um, if you've been paying attention to um, anything from CNN or any other news agencies, and you might have heard something CNN about... fan <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> about... It's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. Thank you. <laughs> If you've heard anything about um, Paramount and CBS suing a film production company known as Axonar Film Productions, I believe is the proper company title, um, that this whole entire lawsuit that's going on by now, and I seriously doubt it will be settled by the time this airs, is what's kind of given rise to this discussion. Let me tell you a little bit about it. We're not going to be focused on this lawsuit. I'm going to talk about briefly enough for you guys to understand where we're coming from in the talk about fan fiction in general. Sorry. I have a great cabbage head on what fan fiction is for those people who don't know. Okay. But start with you. Let's start off with this. Um, What basically is happening is fan fiction exists, and we'll let Brad explain fan fiction in a moment. But X and R... Um, is a film that is being produced, or was being produced, as far as I know it still is, um, that is in the Star Trek universe that is totally fan-created. It is, in this case here, being created to look like it's literally something out of Hollywood. Um, It is garnered not to get any money on it. It has been, the funds to make this movie was raised by Kickstarters, straight fan donations, and this has some good sized stars in it. What's happening is CB. Actually, I'm calling Paramount. Paramount first, and the CBS as part of it, as one of the plaintiffs, have brought a lawsuit against Axonar as a cease and desist. From what I understand, um, that they feel that there's been a copyright infringement on their on Star Trek, and mostly because I think this movie is coming out. This is strictly my opinion. This movie is coming out at roughly the same time as. Start as a Paramount film at Star Trek Beyond. And I think they're really trying to avoid a situation where the fanfic gets more downloads than people go see the movie. I would well, tend to agree with you. make a good movie and it won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's also my opinion. Mm-hmm. But, um, mm-hmm. however, back to this, there's fanfics of all kinds of movies and books that are out there. So let's talk about what fanfiction is, and then we're going to go into the pros, cons, and copyright Okay, so for those who might be wondering uh, what the fanfic is, uh, fan fiction, or as it is abbreviated, fanfic, is fiction about characters or settings from an original work of fiction created by fans of that work rather than by the creator. It is a popular form of fan labor, particularly since the advent of the internet. Fan fiction is rarely commissioned or authorized by the original work's creator or publisher, and is rarely professionally published. Uh, it may or may not infringe upon the author's, the original author's copyright, depending upon your jurisdictional, and we'll get into that more. Um, fan fiction is defined by being both related to its subjects, canonical fan fiction universe, often known as canon, and simultaneously existing outside of it. Most fanfic writers assume that their work is read primarily by other fans and therefore presume that their readers have a knowledge of the canon universe uh, in which their work is based. And if you'd like to know more, you can check out fanfic.net and Archive of Our Own. Uh, highly recommend Archive of Our Own. Mm-hmm. But um, I wanted to dovetail with that. Their fan fiction is not the only kind of fan work. Uh, Brad mentioned fan labors. There are things like uh, videos, music playlists. There are actual songs. There are merchandise. podcasts. Merchandise. There are merchandise, cosplay, things like that. But we're... Those are all different fan works, but we're talking about fan fiction specifically in this episode because it's writing related. And uh, if we go into all the different things there are, like, you know, fan art, for example, we could be here for years. Right. I will say there's going to be aspects of this conversation is why I have never delved into fan fiction myself. So I'm just saying that right up front, if anybody goes out there trying to look for it, Oh, what did David write about Star Wars or write about a Star Trek story or whatever? You're never going to find it. No. Because it does not exist. Mine but is. but let's talk about, let's let's go with the beginning. Let's talk about the pros of fan fiction. Why is fan fiction something that is good? 
from a writing point of view or fan point of view? Uh, tag and then you. Um, I have a, I have a, a rant built up about fan fiction for a long time. Um, I think that fan fiction is a fantastic thing. I have fan fiction to credit for being an author at all, because I would not have practiced writing uh, without the training wheels of being able to write similarly or with the toolbox of someone else. My first story I ever wrote, I believe, was a, a comic book about the Transformers. They fell down a hole. That was pretty much the whole thing, <laughs> but it was uh, it was a start. You know, I I liked drawing pictures of Transformers, so I drew uh, I drew a sequential storyboard of Transformers. And what do I do for a living now? I draw sequential art because I'm an illustrator specifically for picture books. So uh, would I have come up with my own idea? Maybe. Would I have come up with it at five? Probably not. <laughs> so thanks Transformers. Thanks. Uh, uh, Power Rangers and Little Mermaid and The Lion King and the Boxcar Children and the Choose Your Own Adventure novels and on and on Pokemon and Sailor Moon and Reboot and Escaflone and all these things that I wrote in and I continue to write a little bit of fan fiction because sometimes you get an idea the idea is beholden to a specific universe and why not it's fun it's practice practice is important. I also draw quite a bit of fan art. I was going to say, can we plug your Babylon, you know, comic? Yeah, we can plug my comic if you want. Yeah, your Babylon 6 comic is actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm working on episode 2 as we speak. It's a labor of love. Exactly. And I'm not accepting any money from it. It's a fan labor. Because it's a fan <laughs> labor. I wanted to give it to my fellow fans. And it's already improved my storytelling abilities as a uh, comic book writer. Excellent. I have a similar story to Jen's. Um... <laughs> One of the first stories I wrote when I was uh, in first grade was a fanfic. We published their stories in our class, so I'm sorry. I still made no money from it, though, and <laughs> it was completely freely done and out of love. It was a crossover. That means one universe, one fan universe, and another fan universe are intersecting in a story. It was a crossover between Star Trek The Next Generation and the troll dolls that were all the rage <laughs> when I was little. I love it. Nice. So... Sorry, you guys are dating yourselves so much. Like, everyone, if they're really into it, will know how old you are. That's uh -huh. okay. Congratulations, y'all. You're lucky you were there. I'm I was there. And 30 even. You can now feel like you're alienated or something yeah. if you want to. Uh, that's okay. Not everybody's there yet. But, uh, <laughs> they're missing out. They'll mm -hmm. find out when they get there. Um, so, it was a crossover. And I kept writing fan fiction. I wrote original fiction as well, but fan fiction was great for teaching me characterization, how to keep someone in character, because there was already um, a well-rounded reference that I could go to. One of the things that fan fiction is great with is, you know, teaching people how to keep to characterization that is good. Because other people can review your work if you post it online, and that's part of the fan community thing, writing community, also good, we like that here. Mm -hmm. Um, but people can tell you, you know, I didn't think the characterization was quite right on this. Or they can give you a lot of encouragement, which will keep you writing. Hey, you can say, like, yeah, data never sounds like that. Mm -hmm. Data doesn't use contractions, exactly. except when he does, you know. <laughs> except except when, when he does. does. <laughs> but, you know, Never that's had. one of the great things about fan fiction for me. It gave me a community early on, a writing community, before I could drive or anything, to um, work on my writing. So I have a slew of fandoms that I've written in. And one of the ways that I knew I was ready to be done writing in a given fandom and to write more original work again was when I started writing AUs more than works in the original canon. An so AU in, being an alternate universe. Yes. Thank so, um, <laughs> and the original canon being the actual storyline, everything that is official. So when I wrote mostly AUs starring these characters that I loved, it was time to kind of ease out of the fandom and go original again. So that was something I learned about myself. And I got to practice all sorts of different uh, styles of writing with fan fiction, too. I'm going to say thank you to Jen for pointing out what AU, what AU stood for on alternate universe. AU stands I had, for alternate universe. EU uh, stands for extended universe. Because <laughs> I have had so much astronomy astrophysics in my background. <laughs> as soon as you said AU, you yeah, I'm not thinking of <laughs> astrological, or, yeah, I'm not thinking of the AU, wrong AU. The Go other ahead. AU. The, the other, other AU. AU. Um, I also just wanted to, like... Oh, I had a thing, and then I got excited about all the extended universes. Can no, would you describe what the, the extended universe extended is? Extended universe would be uh, any works that are created 
uh, under the banner of the actual product owner. Yeah, they so, expanded. So, like, so like in, your Star, Star Wars novels. Yeah, so oh, Star Wars. Yeah, those two. Star Wars has just shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of novels that happened before the movies, after the movies, alongside the movies, about the kids of the people in the movies. They don't exist anymore. They don't exist anymore, but it, it's an extensive, extended universe, and all those authors, uh, you can find them, you know, in an actual you know, store, all of those authors that wrote those were written and given a paycheck by the people who own the license for those yeah. things. So right. the extended universe is a more official sort of fan fiction paid, library. And it is not. Uh, something that has a fantastic <laughs> EU that you know, is wide, fast and wide, is Doctor Who. Yep. Doctor Who's been around for decades, and the EU for that is plus. amazing. <laughs> they have audio dramas, mm-hmm. they've got plays, they've got movies, they've got, you know, well, books and books and books and books. And comic books. Comic books. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. So if you want to see what an EU looks like, and if you haven't had enough Doctor Who, you check all that out. <laughs> Oh, I was going to make a note, um, because we've mentioned in other episodes, but not in this one. What we meant when we said the the Star Wars EU, a bunch of them suddenly just didn't exist, it's because originally the Star Wars books were for the prequel movies that hadn't come out yet, and the sequel movie that has now come out. So it was before and after episodes 4, 5, and 6. And with the movies that have come out since, that's a new official canon. So the extended universe is on both ends of that, of those original trilogy films have suddenly been... They're but fun. now there's all new, because yeah. now you have suddenly all the Force Awakens comments, and there are the Force Awakens comic books, yeah. the Force Awakens novels, all that kind of stuff. So, so the point one, is, one, the one old th- expanding universe is no longer canon. Yes. Yes. But even though this is really technically fan fiction, but what you're talking about there is actually, I don't want to say this, authorized Yes. Fan fiction. Yes. Yes. Licensed yes. fan fiction. Licensed fan fiction. Yeah, it's got all the right symbols on the back cover. Exactly. Fully legal yes. fan fiction. Fan fiction that you can do for money. Yeah. Right. Often approaching, you know, it's like you do it for a paycheck. <coughs> mm-hmm. Someone right. says, write this book for me. <laughs> and then there's the other fanfic, like you were talking about before, Jen, when you wrote about Transformers. Mm-hmm. Um, you were writing about, Kathleen was writing about Star Trek Next Generation. Yes, you, were, you guys were young when you were doing this. But there's fanfic written not for money, but and not receiving anybody's blessing from the author to the industry behind it. Mm-hmm. But you're writing it for fun. Go ahead and then you. Some um, some authors of official some published authors who have fan fiction and fan works written about their in their universes don't like it. But I think a lot of authors now have realized that. Encouraging their fan base is amazing, and they just cannot acknowledge fan fiction, and they will not acknowledge it, and they cannot read it because they could get into trouble for copyright issues. Yeah. But well, actually, that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. Oh, okay. yeah, actually, well, go on. Before you no, do, no, before you no. do, I just want to quote something really fast. You said that, and I was trying to remember. I think it's at the Pacific Northwest Writers Association work um, writers conference. If not, it was at Baltricon, where one of the authors was asked about fan fiction, and they go. Okay, guys, I really do understand what fan fiction is, but I do not know what this fan fiction is you speak of, because mm-hmm. if I know about it, then that means I have to acknowledge it, and if I ne- have to acknowledge it, that means I have to sue you for a copyright infringement, and I don't want to do that. I have an alleged Gene Roddenberry mm-hmm. quote to add very quickly to the conversation. Go for it. Uh, this, there's, this isn't kind of, you know, chronicled anywhere, but... Uh, there's a, a legend that says that George Lucas came to Gene Roddenberry when he made the Star Wars movies and said, Gene, what do you do with all this copyright infringement that's happening with all this fan fiction? And Gene says, go for it. Yeah, let him do it. It'll make you rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Kathleen was saying, there are authors who don't. Anne Rice probably being the most famous of yeah. them. She just, she, you know, has sued many, many a soul uh, for writing Interview with a Vampire fan fiction. Oh. Uh, she, she prevents it with you know craziness hmm. uh and mccaffrey was also another one who did oh, not yeah, she like hated it. yeah she did not she like, didn't fan like people fiction. drawing pictures either no nope. <laughs> uh however most famously is oh, St- stephanie God. meyer who had a section on her website where she encouraged people to submit fan fiction <laughs> uh one of which got turned into probably one of the most famous novels of not too long ago uh, 50 shades of gray yes um, so, you know, it, it is kind of a back and forth as to whether or not you want to do it. Um, I don't think you can stop it. 
I mean, to be honest, I, you know, you if, if fans want to kind of create them. stuff in their world, I don't know if you can really just prevent that. And to be honest, I don't know if you should. Kind of that sense of letting the fans embrace and love what they love. Um, you you can you know, spend a lot of money on lawyers and stuff. Yeah, you'd have to do it like Napster. You just hit individual people and yeah. hope that everyone else gets scared and stops. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think it's important to go after people trying to make money off your work. Mm-hmm. But if somebody just wants to write up their fanfic, you know, maybe let that go. Go ahead, and then I know there have been uh, published authors who I believe were found through their fan fiction. For example, the Fifty Shades of Grey was yeah. a Twilight fanfic, and the author was approached and changed it all to original works, basically. Change the name, it. change the location. Changed a she few She still ended up having to pay reparations to Stephanie Meyer because it was still. She went mm-hmm. on public, went out in public, and said, "Yeah, it started as a Twilight fanfic." And if but she see, hadn't done that, then no one would have ever known. <laughs> see, no, you wouldn't know because everyone was, you know. Uh, well, no, I, I just meant that it okay. wasn't that similar. Yeah. But the people who approached her and wanted to publish her wanted to do so because she had written a fanfic that they yeah. felt was good enough. And a lot of published authors have written fanfiction um, and either taken it down when they became published, or um, you know still publish it under their pen name, under their fanfiction online pen name. And it's an open secret. This author is this fanfic writer. There was a, on Live Journal, someone was asking for stories of a certain kind because she wanted to read a bunch of, she wanted to read something good that she really liked. And someone recommended her own novels to her. <laughs> and uh, based on the kind of writing she did as a fanfic writer, and someone else posted in a comment after that recommendation, you know she wrote those, right? <laughs> it was an open secret. So, you know, writers, one of the best things about writing is being able to write whatever's in your head and just go as the spirit moves you. And sometimes that's playing in other people's worlds. And I think people will do that naturally anyway. Whether you choose to post that online as a fanfic is up to you. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever had a thought like, this song really describes this character, like, I bet if they heard it, they would be really weirded out and turn off the radio. Or, I bet if they heard it, they'd be singing it at the top of their lungs and no one would understand what they were doing. <laughs> like, those are just little thoughts that I have about characters that I love. They're not even fanfics yet. But, like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has them. Which, by the way, E.L. James' uh, fanfic pen name is Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. <laughs> 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 oh, had to throw I, that out there. I have. I can't say anything. Okay, go. Oh. <laughs> well, I wanted to agree with Rat about something, which I often don't do. I don't know. I'm sorry uh-oh. about. Uh oh, okay. what's that? <laughs> it is that uh, you said you can't stop them. Yeah. And that is certainly true because if they are even even if they're nice and take it down when you ask them to take it down, mm-hmm. they can put it up a hundred thousand other places and in another 60, 70, 80, 100 languages that you can't speak and we'll never find. So there is no way to stop them. I have then a suggestion for authors, and that's to try to turn it into an advertisement for your stuff by asking them to to please recognize that these are your characters. You can write it for them and ask them to post that, I think. And I think most of them would. If they are, in fact, fans, they surely would. Yeah, citing source material is a great way of producing fanfic because Mm -hmm. you can, you know, then honor the original source material and the person who created it. One of you uh, you and then you. It was about citing source material. Mm -hmm. A lot of fanfiction before AO3 and fanfiction.net started with a disclaimer. Uh These characters are the property of such and such writer or publisher or company, Mm -hmm. and I'm making no money off of this. And that was a method of free advertising because I actually started watching The Sentinel, a TV show that I had never heard of because I was I was seeing so many authors I loved writing The Sentinel fan fiction. I bought the DVD set for season one. I will buy the DVD sets for seasons two through four if they come out with them. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> so I am totally willing to support the people who created these things, and I would love to because I love all the fan works that have come out of that show. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. and then Maybe I, someone I else already show. knows this, but um, it seems like... Some things like, <clears throat> okay, Star Trek goes back and forth, 
but and but Star Wars has always been really good well, at you know, Star Trek is notorious as being one of the fan group things that we're all that were really friendly to fans. Yeah, so specifically back in the original series but, and whatever Gene Roddenberry was alive. But the point is, it seems like there is, there you might need to talk to or get a real legal advice from a real attorney about this. But it seems like there are ways to do disclaimers to the effect of you're welcome to do fan fiction as long as you acknowledge the source work and don't make any money off of it mm-hmm. type thing. Yeah, that's not enough. Right. Well, yeah, like that's I said, talk enough. to a what lawyer. Else? What else do we need? Well, I, well, actually, I, I, I had a feeling like you were jumping in on this, so that's why. Kind of, sort of. I wasn't going to go down the legal side at all. I'm trying to really avoid the, even the stuff on disclaimer. <gasps> Step on the legal land. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, hold on. The mm. Sentinel, all seasons are out. I know what I'm getting on Amazon the next time I purchase anything. <laughs> <laughs> She has turned I'm into so fangirl excited. here. She okay. is fangirl. They didn't okay. have it. What? Okay. Go, Go ahead, okay. Brad, and then back to me. Uh, real <laughs> quick, just to kind of throw it out there, and this is part of what started uh-huh. this topic with the Anaxar thing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem is money. So if you are going to make any money off of your fanfic, mm-hmm. which means oh, that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're throwing it out as an ebook, if you're putting it up on a site that has a per pay thing or uh-huh. anything that could possibly generate any form of income. Right then you have crossed the line on copyright. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have no legal recourse. Unless you, it's uh, parody. Uh, you can do parodies. parody, and uh, there is actually um, some things about where uh, there's most famously the novel that has Holden Caulfield as a 76-year-old guy. Um, that was determined to be uh, kind of within the same honoring of the character, and he was allowed to keep that. Hmm. Um, however, uh, the, it, eh, you are on such sketchy legally er, legal terms right there that most of the time you're going to lose. Oh. So the reality is, is create if you're going to create your own stuff, yeah, you know, create your own stuff to sell it. Um, but you can, you know, there's there's plenty of opportunity out there to share your work and kind of share fanfic and all that kind of stuff. May I speak to one major exception to that is if the original work is in the public domain. Yes. So if you want to do right. a fan fiction of Emily Dickinson, go to it. You, you can write your own, you know, <laughs> no, right. pick your favorite hold, hold, Victorian hold novel and keep going. Mm-hmm. Hold that thought for a second. It's before 1932. It's 90, it's 90 years, 92 it's years after the death of the creator. 70 years plus. Unless, unless, yeah, 72 70 years 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 unless the rights have been passed down, and that's, yeah. the, that's the tricky thing. Go to the Gutenberg Project and let them do it and tell you if it's in the public domain. Yes. Okay, what what I've been trying to get to, guys, is I want to say before we forget. Okay, while I do not write fan fiction for a lot of the stuff we're going to hit on, you probably have heard some of it, let's face a fact. And you can read this in any of the works by Joseph Campbell. He, would, I think, would agree with me. Every single story written today is a retelling of another story, irregardless of it being on purpose or not. Everything we write is technically fanfic, whether or not we realize it. Now, because it is it goes all the way back to ancient mythology. I am not writing Johnny Quest fanfic. Oh, Sorry. why not? <laughs> Come on. What's wrong with that? And then Johnny the other thing Quest I'm is gonna, a gem. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The other thing I'm going to say is, and I'm glad Jen opened the door. I just couldn't jump into the door that <laughs> early, that far back. And then, Lee, I'll turn this over to you. Mm-hmm. Is I don't know how this is going to get worked out with Paramount versus XNR. I am not even making any suggestions. I'm just making an observation. I think that pa- that Paramount might find themselves in a little bit of trouble trying to defend their position because they have allowed and they have allowed fan fiction to occur. In fact, Paramount at one time was cracking down, then opened back up saying, no, this is something great because they are advertising for us and now they're coming down again. I don't know if but it's just this on this project one. beyond anything else that's come through uh-huh. reaches a level Agreed. unlike because there's there's Star Trek fanfic movies out there. Oh, big time! You know that have been made by all kinds. You can watch uh, what is it? Uh, what's the Star Trek movie where they interview the guys who are making it? Um, it's not. There's a couple of different ones. There's um, but Trekkies. That's it. Trekkies. <laughs> yeah, they, there's that. They, Trekkies one and Trekkies two. Yeah. <laughs> gems of movie or of documentary movie type things and um, yeah. But yeah so there, there have been a ton of like little fan made movies but this reaches into a level where you have real actors uh-huh. people from the original series uh, you have a, a certain level of quality that I think is what has brought this lawsuit on I would totally Unfortunately, agree quality isn't a grounds for legal <laughs> no, no but, but, but about, yeah the money is about motivation yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're talking about a field that we're pretty much just 
leaning on the generosity of the license holders yeah. to not tell us to stop. Um, the quality is high enough in this production that they then want to mm -hmm. tell them to stop. Or, well, which, what I would do, which would be to buy their company and then let them finish the movie and then get money from it. Right, but, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a feeling that's the way this is going to go. Yeah. It very well could be. And then I'll, I'm going to turn this over to Liam. to say, if you want to see, when we're talking about quality of this level, um, it's up to you, but if you want to go on YouTube and look up Prelude to Axanar. Um, you might have to spell that. A-X-A-N-A-R. There you go. Um, <laughs> I can't spell, but I didn't know that one. <laughs> How much of a track again am I? Anyway. <laughs> you can only spell nonsense words. <laughs> anyway, well, but just look up third... Star Trek fan films, and you'll yeah. catch a whole bunch of others. <laughs> right, but talk about the quality. Look up this one. You can see what we're talking about by quality of Prelude to XNR. Okay. All right. Uh, two things. Um, first, I just want to do a warning about when we were Ooh. talking about public domain. Uh -huh. um, with fairy tales, you have to be careful because when we were putting together our group of Wicked Fairy Tales redoing, there were some that wanted to do Disney fairy tales. Yeah. Yeah. Disney yeah. fairy tales do not fall under public domain, even if they're older ones because Disney has bought rights or whatever. So you can go back to the original of what Disney used to do. Like I think it was called Ice Princess or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And you can do one on that, but you cannot She's do... There. The, the one queen. from, right. And like Cinderella, make sure you read other versions of Cinderella, not just watch the Disney version of Cinderella. Right. right. You yeah. need to yeah, go but back. Even you run into problems there because you can't use the word Cinderella because right. Disney you, has trademarked that. Yeah, you have to go and back so to the, the past back. name. So like I, I ended up going with Goldie Locks Three Bears and called it Goldie's Three Bears because that's public domain. So, And a lot of others chose other ones. and mm -hmm. So... And then the second thing was um, on Amazon, they are supposed to be working on for authors where they have bought rights to certain areas of fan fiction so that their authors can write fan fiction and have legal rights to You're do talking so. talking Kindle World? Yes. You can earn a little bit of money from yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Potentially. I, I have not been able to look and see what rights they bought and I can show what you. areas. I can show I, I, wanted to, I wanted to know about this Kindle World business because this is, I think, the second time I'm hearing of it, but the Kindle first time was like two words. So, what is this that you speak of? I just had it open. But she's she's you pulling up. I was trying machine. to find it. <laughs> but well, real quick, while you look for the Kindle World, because we'll explain that in a second, uh, I'll throw out my, my kind of one of my favorites, and this is going back to something we talked a little bit earlier about uh, fan art. Um, so, most famously, probably the most stolen thing out there is Calvin and Hobbes. Um, the creator of Calvin and Hobbes has never licensed anything. So if you buy, you've got a Calvin and Hobbes anything, it's actually illegal. Uh, but for that, I will throw out that I am totally right now in love with the Calvin and Hobbes slash Force Awakens uh, drawings that have been rolling around <laughs> Tumblr and the net. Um, they're hilarious. So, you know, on that note, there there is there is a joy that can be had, uh, you know, seeing... Uh, Ray and BB-8 flying down the hill or something like that, or <laughs> Spaceman Finn, or, you know, something along those lines is hilarious, and I want that, um, you know, and I really hope nobody goes around suing people for that, uh, but, you know, there is, uh, you know, you are on kind of a slippery slope. Right, this is so. the, here's the news on Kindle Worlds, this is the official Amazon statement. Uh, Kindle Worlds... Uh, welcome to Kindle Worlds, a place for you to publish fan fiction inspired by popular books, shows, movies, comics, music, and games. With Kindle Worlds, you can write new stories based on featured worlds, engage an audience of readers, and earn royalties. Amazon Publishing has secured the licenses from Warner Brothers. Uh, their television groups, Alloy Entertainment for Gossip Girls, Pretty Little Liars, and The Vampire Diaries. Valiant Entertainment for Archer and Armstrong... Bloodshot, Harbinger, Shadow Man, and Exo Man of War, Hugh Howey's Silo Saga, Barry Eisler's John Rain novels, Blake Crouch's Wayward Pine series, and the Forward Saga by Neil Stevenson. Oh. Greg Bear, oh, the, all these Greg Bear, Mark Teppo, Eric Bear. Go uh, to the Joseph site to Brassie, see if your book's there. <laughs> uh, Nicole Galland and Cooper Moo. Licenses for more worlds are on the way. Interesting. So if you've written fanfic in any of those things, do another edit on it and submit and see if you can get some royalties. Oh, and there are major limitations, and they'll own your characters, even new characters, if you do that. So keep yeah, that in mind. Uh, you're entering into a contract with them for that. Yeah. Which kind of falls to my next topic, but I'm going to let 
the door go, then we need to jump onto the cons. Well, this is kind of a con, I Perfect. suppose. It is that uh, you're talking about legalities. Let's talk about morality for just a moment. Hmm. The United States didn't sign any international copyright treaty until 1891. Before that time, it was quite common for buccaneers to steal new material freshly out in England and sell it to publishers here and vice versa so that there were no royalties going to the authors or the publishers or anybody from that other country. I think we'd agree that that is bad stealing, right? That is stealing. That is evil. Is it any less stealing to steal only descriptions or only characters? Yes. <laughs> well, it is? It, yeah. No, it's, I it's, don't it's, think it's so. Still, well, okay. <laughs> uh, I, first off, I would say that this actually still goes on today this uh, was... with a certain website I don't really want to mention or a certain a-hole who lives up in Canada <laughs> uh, who steals uh, books and then puts them out. And because of the way that international law works, there's nothing you can do about it. So you can generally find most novels for completely free. Uh, and then I would also note that... Uh, there might be a certain country on the other side of the world that has, like, billions more people than we do uh, that is quite famous for uh, taking our content and putting it out, uh, you know, in their language. and Underneath a different author's name. And, you know, they keep all the royalties that might come from that. Um, and due to international treaty and stuff, there's literally nothing you can do about it. Uh, now, when we get to descriptions of characters where it's just literally... You're not calling him Han Solo, but you're calling him, you know, Han's Ben Olo. Frollo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, then it, uh, th that can get kind of sketchy, too. But I would say that if you change enough, then you're fine. But if you don't, then... Don't go into any interviews claiming that it was fan fiction of the original thing. Exactly. <laughs> you know, because then you're E.L. James. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I'm thinking, for instance, writing, let's say you write an episode for fan fiction of Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, again, as long as you're not actually making any money off of it, that's a labor of love. And like, like we said earlier, that's um, advertising, at least potentially, for it's the still, original. The, if you're going to come down to brass tags, it's still stealing. It's you're still, still stealing, stealing intellectual you. property. Yes. It it's mm -hmm. one of, but like so many laws in the U.S., I speed all the time. <laughs> Do I get fined all the time? I only get fined if I get caught. Any cops so, who are fans of ours, please don't just pull her over because she's. You said don't that. know my license plate. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we might tell them. No. no. Okay. That would be bad. Yeah, that would get other people. I'm would sure use she's that for not the only one here yeah. with a heavy foot. Uh, but the uh, the point is no that idea. yeah, it's a calculated risk. But the fact that fan fiction and fan art and, and fan films and things like that get under the radar is because they don't see enough harm done that they can justify the legal fees for prosecuting you. <laughs> and often uh, authors like to see fan fiction. I actually have a goal as a uh, as an author myself. I would really love to create something that someone else wants to then supplement with their own stuff. I would love to go on to AO3 or fanfiction.net and see a million dirty fanfics about my exceptionally <laughs> wholesome <laughs> fantasy novel. <laughs> I'm not going to read any of them, but the fact uh, that they exist is going to be hilarious. <laughs> so I don't, like, I'm going to be one of those, you know, fanfic the heck out of it. Please don't, you know, claim that my stuff is yours. And by but, the way, I already wrote the fanfic on Alexander and Genevieve getting together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Boy, is, that fan, is that fanfic if you wrote it yourself by your, about your own characters? Well, it's not coming out, so yeah. <laughs> the question is if it's legal. Not legal, if it's canon. Yeah. If it's in-universe canon, then therefore you can We'll see say, what the future holds. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to mention that in screenwriting, when you want to write for a given TV show, one of the things you need to do is write, basically, a fanfic episode for that show. The people who do the show want to see that you know the characters, that you're good at keeping them in character, you know the beats of the show, you're good at plotting, you're good at making something compelling. So it's part of the Hollywood industry, um, writing fan fiction, yes. in a sense, because for screenwriting, you need to write spec scripts like that. Yeah, they call them spec scripts. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I actually was going to say almost exactly what Jen said, that I would be flattered if I started seeing fan fic of my vampire world or 
whatever, and drawings of Mika and her leather and whips and chains or whatever, I, I would find it flattering. So I, I totally want one of my friends to read them and be like, hey, are they any good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I will say, getting back to what Fedora was talking about, where you take the description of the character, one of the problems that you can really run into, and you will get the ire and lawyers and everything on you, is when you do something that is wholly against that character. Oh, yeah. So if you take a Disney character and suddenly you turn them into a horrible psycho killer, you know, Mickey Mouse is running around killing every other... That I mean, as much as we might want to read that, Disney is going to come after you. True, but that's most likely to be parody. Because you've taken their... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but that's... That's dark, Mickey. That, yeah, and really that doesn't dark. necessarily fall under parody. Parody and satire is what you would then approach the legal action with. Yeah, and to be right. honest, we'll get most likely the judge is going to throw that out as not being a parody. Because you have destroyed well, have the to, original character. You'd have to prove that it was a statement you were making. Exactly. If, what you were, if the statement you were making with your pedo death, but this Mickey, is where Mickey Mouse is that really run Disney into comes in and uh, and you know rapes little guy or whatever. Yeah. It's like that's what that was about. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you'd be able to get out of that. Case. Yeah, maybe though. But see, the, the, <sighs> Disney's going to argue that you're hurting their brand, right? And Which is true. You yes. can't. Parody isn't supposed to hurt the brand. Right. Parody is supposed to be making fun of the brand. But it's also supposed so to be distinctly you know, different. Yes. Too. But, you know, <laughs> that's that that's easy. Yeah, right? it, comes down to, it comes down to the brand, and that's mm. what really matters here. So, Well, when you're taking on a lion like Disney, the likelihood that you're going to get eaten is a little bit higher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just avoid. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why it's better when you write fanfic to stay, to the, stay true to the characters as opposed to doing something so out of the wheelhouse. I was going to say a con of fanfiction that is equally a pro is um, with fanfiction you get feedback for your work, you create a community around yourself um, of other fans of this work. Uh -huh. But your training wheels, mm -hmm. your training wheel creations are also out in the public now. And something that's always fun, and not fun at all, is um, going back and seeing fan fiction that I've written that's like from back in the day. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this Thanks, is terrible. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I thought this was good, ever. I mean, it's great that I've improved, but oh, this is on the internet, and it's never going away, even if I take it down. Yeah. So Maybe that's why you should have a you know screen name that isn't your real name. Oh, everybody does. Yeah. It would be really yeah, weird if I, saw, too, like, so. yeah. if I yeah. saw like the name Jennifer Jones. Like, is this a real person's name? I think I knew a Jennifer Jones. <laughs> An actress. Not the actress, somebody else. But um, <laughs> it would be really weird if you saw someone else's name, um, a, a real person name, as, a, as an internet handle. Unless you're on a Google property, because they just go ahead and change that straight over nowadays. Which is so obnoxious. Um, but actually, something that I just, for, that I just remembered, um, in the early days of uh, gay romance writing being published, people would use internet handles as the author's name. And some people still have those from back in the day. But uh, now we use real names or names that are fake but sound like real names. <laughs> so that that's changed. And I think fan fiction on the internet has a lot to do with it. A lot to do with making people more okay with reading gay romance, lesbian romance. Um, there were zines, zines, uh, fan-made magazines uh -huh. that were... Uh, published in air quotes and sent around to fans of various things by the communities they'd managed to create pre internet internet. Um, I think the internet has made has more normalized things like that, so the zine creation isn't necessary because the community is already there and you don't have to dig so much to find it. Um, yeah. But even before the internet was going on, it was going on whether there was community there or not. So can't stop the signal. Well, let's say that we forgive the children for their training wheels and, you know, a little spot of fun every now and then for fan fiction is okay. But in general, for a serious writer, sounds to me like a colossal waste of time. Why aren't you working on your work in progress? Why aren't you working on something that is yours personally, that means something to you, instead of just uh, jacking around. Can I? This is why I don't write fanfic anymore. I oh, right. Red. We agree. I want to say that every hand but mine went up, and that's just because every other hand was um, I, I was getting ready, I was waiting to say, I had, well, as soon as she, 
as soon as Fedora tossed that bone into the middle of the yard, it was I had a bomb, th- wasn't it? It was. I had three people jumping up, and I had, and I'm like Brad. Except for I never wrote it. I agree. I agree. I've never wanted to write fan fiction because I did feel that was taking away from what I was writing. But I'm going to say this: I've hated Star Trek. I love Star Trek, but I hated Star Trek because a lot of times when I wrote. When I went back to re-edit it, re-read yeah. it, looked like Star Trek. I was like, well, that goes in the drawer. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure which of you three ladies were the first ones. I have something to say about <laughs> historical fiction, so if it's not related to that, oh, we can... Oh, no, I wanted oh, to oh, take uh, Fedora's question and put it into my real life art, art-wise. Um, I draw pictures every single day, like all day, mm-hmm. every day. Uh, often it's for, you know, for job, and... Uh, for job, you have to worry about what the client wants, and you have to make sure you're making them happy. And then when I work on my own picture books, my own picture books have to do with what's marketable. Uh, is this going to get picked up by an agent? Is this going to sell well? And then when I am exhausted of doing that for hours, I open up a new canvas, and I draw Babylon 5 fan art. Well, because I'm happy that, you doodle. That's well, okay. Writers can doodle and then journal. But I do this every single too. day. Because it, it's relaxing. It's relaxing to me, and it's also practice. Uh, same thing for writing fanfic. If I'm writing on my novel, and I'm like, man, I'm so stuck, I'm so stuck, open up a new document and be like, and then Kirk descended the alien <laughs> planet, and I could write a story about Kirk going out for ice cream with Luke Skywalker, and it's just a little bit of a, ooh, nothing, no stakes, no one's going to read it, and if they do, they're going to laugh at it. It doesn't have to be perfect. No I one's gonna buy stories. it. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a little bit of relaxation downtime that also has something to do with my likes. It's both my hobby and my career. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm gonna toss a little hum- humorous question I have to ask. Does Luke get any dating tips from Kirk during that ice cream story? Anyway, oh sorry. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> picks an extra cone up for Biggs okay. on the way home. I, I kind of agree with her. I, I haven't written specifically fan fiction. I did go to Three Bears, but that was legal because it was open domain. I've thought about writing some fanfic um, in the future, and I would be doing it for just fun, just to kind of cleanse my palate and just have some fun and not have to worry about Mm -hmm. the technical side of everything. Um, I was just going to say, I find a tremendous similarity between historical fiction and fan fiction. Mm -hmm. In historical fiction, in in both, you're writing in another world. The world is already made for you. You have Buffalo Bill in your story. You stole the character of Buffalo Bill. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's the same thing as fanfic, only it's a real person versus a fictional universe. And these fictional universes are quite real. I mean, if you're a uh, Doctor Who fan, and the fan, I mean, frankly, you have to do as much research to get Doctor Who right sick. as you would a fan fi- I mean, and a historical have to pick fiction which version right. Of them you're yeah. Right. yeah, hold on a minute, guys. Moment of silence. That was a mic drop. <laughs> However, I'm going to just read my drop. I'm going to this over to Brad real quick. And that is, there's a difference between using people who have existed and now are dead in a fictional story versus a fictional character that is somebody else's intellectual property into that different story. Yeah, it's called the difference between IP okay. and libel. Yeah. <laughs> you can't libel the dead. Yeah, you can't libel the dead, so, you know, Fedora, you're fine. Um, Why do you think Downington <laughs> Abbey ended? They were approaching real people. Well, okay. <laughs> well, uh, let, me, let me bounce this one. It's, go ahead and say that again, because I don't... I the think difference you're seems purely legal. Well, it's not. <laughs> it, it's, the difference is, in a historical fiction... The people who are historical figures are not someone's creation. Now, you can argue there's a lot of mythology around these historical <laughs> figures. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking You're about taking th- God's copyright. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm, giving, I'm asking Brad for a high five. <laughs> uh, that. But what I'm trying to say is they're a historical person. So I could write a story where... Eleanor, D- Eleanor Roosevelt was involved in, ra- in solving mysteries. Wait a minute. That was done by her son. Son or Yes, yeah, son. son. Elliot uh, Roosevelt. Wrote, yeah. wrote his mother as a mystery solver? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's That's great, adorable. It's a great series. <laughs> um, versus if I was to take Kylo Ren, um, since we've been starting Everyone's with Star Wars. Everyone's new favorite Wars, emo baby. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm having him have a tantra tamper, ten, temper tantrum with his lightsaber. Cannon. Yeah, with his <laughs> cannon. 
And then he goes <laughs> and punches his mom, Leia. I don't know how, but it just makes this up. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing with someone else's characters. <laughs> I'm playing with someone else's intellectual property, and that's the, that's the discussion. By the way, I know I sound like I'm anti-fan fiction. I'm not. I'm just saying it's not for me to write. Well, throwing it back to fan fiction and why you would write it at points. Um, so, uh, for those of you who might have indulged a little into the D and D arts, um, <laughs> D and darts. Yes, the, the, you know, if you're following the the canonical, uh, you know, journeys and stuff that are published, that's one thing. Have fun, enjoy. Uh, but somebody like myself. Uh, who would, you know, be a dungeon master, uh, yep. started creating my own, you know, journeys long, 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 long ago. Please explain <laughs> dungeon master, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's the guy who's uh, the saddest kid in the room who created it all and is rolling all the dice and is uh, leading the, the adventure along and playing it out before them. I like being but, dungeon master, though. Oh, so did I. <laughs> But the reason why I enjoyed it was it, it really taught me how to craft stories. Okay. Um, I had directly sitting in front of me several people who were uh, giving me instant feedback <laughs> on what they thought of what I was doing. Um, you know, and out of that came not only going through a medieval world with fantasy and elves and you know, all that kind of stuff like D&D, but also running through Star Wars, uh, mm-hmm. running through a bunch of different worlds, uh, some of which I created. And... Some of those worlds that I created taught me world building, taught me how to, you know, kind of fathom and create all this with giving me a base out of D&D. If I were to go publish those, uh, D&D TSR would sue the heck out of me because, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, instant threads that run through that that would link back directly to what TSR has done. However, for a high school kid, it was probably the greatest story crafting class I could have ever taken. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so out of that, fanfic can be a wonderful way of teaching yourself how to craft stories. You know, you mentioned earlier. Even though that was a game instead yeah, of fanfiction. Yeah, fiction. exactly. Oh, no, well, if you had ever played D&D, you would know that that was story, writing a story. The storytelling yeah. element is probably the biggest part of Exactly. Yeah, it's very much so. You know, we talked about this before, you know, putting your work out there and getting feedback and stuff like that. It, it can be a wonderful way of... of Honing your craft. Nowadays, when I world build, I make certain not to include anything that can be included in anyone else's universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I get stuck, you know, and I, and I don't want to write in my novel that day, I write a short story that then can be, you know, completely of my own, and I get to do it. Uh, the latest one came out of a dream that I had. I had a really freaky, scary dream. Woke up the next morning and started writing a freaky, scary short story. Uh, will I do something with it? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, but the point is, is that now that you know, now that I'm a creator of my own work, I tend to try and create, you know, of my own as opposed to doing just fanfic like I used to do in high school. Go ahead, Lee. I just wanted to add. Um, I never did Dungeons and Dragons, but I did do uh, try to do Vampire Masquerade, which ah, was another yes. okay. world building one. And in fact, I built Mika Shadow on the character sheet that I later created her whole world in. Did Angel of Death from character sheet? Yeah, a character sheet. You do the profile and you pick out like what their strengths, what yep. their weaknesses are, and give them their whole backstory. And that's how Mika Shadow was created. Yes, in fact, I, I ran not just D and D. I ran several White Wolf Shadowrun games. Uh, you know, Vampire the Masquerade, uh, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. all good stuff. D and D, Star Trek, Star Wars, agreed. Yes, go on. Right. And James Bond. So it seems like we are swiftly approaching the end of this episode. So for those people who want to write fan fiction or do fan works, what do they need to remember when doing this to help keep them out of copyright trouble as much as can be kept out when putting a fan work out there? Well, first, perish the thought that you're going to earn any kind of money off of it. Yeah. Just Unless you're doing it through reason. Amazon. Write it yourself. Something. No, I mean, Even seriously, then, you're going to get, like, maybe here. five cents royalty for the yeah. thing if you're lucky. But write it for yeah. yourself. I mean, you know, all fanfic is a labor of love. You're spending hours on something that has no marketability whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, very little marketability whatsoever. So, first off, know that it is a labor of love and treat it as such. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know... Embrace it. Love it. It's yours. Have fun with it. You know, if you want to have, you know, your uh, crazy 
Finn Poe romance, feel free, go for it. Um, you know, it's it's what it's there for. You know, the ability to express this. Why is Finn Poe crazy? I didn't say it was crazy. I said just go crazy with it. No, there, uh, Tumblr is filled with Finn Poe. <laughs> <laughs> so don't make money off of it. Seems yeah. like rule yeah. number one. What about uh, disclaimers? Do we still add those all the time? Or does it matter if you add a disclaimer if you're posting it somewhere like Archive of Rowan or something? I think the average fan fiction reader understands what fan fiction is. Especially if you post on something like fanfiction.net or, or AO3. They have a big disclaimer right there on their front page. By the way, this is a fan fiction website and everything on here is fan fiction and the stuff that's po- posted doesn't belong to the people who wrote it. I, I don't think it's as important. The concept of fan fiction isn't so strange any longer. But, you know, if you want to wear bolts and suspenders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I think you all convinced me that <laughs> fan fiction has some sort of point to it. But let me say this, yeah. that, I, that I hope you don't stop there. Because don't let it be a graveyard for your creativity. You have to go beyond it and create things of your own that you can truly be proud of and know that it's all you. It's not, it's not George Lucas. It's not somebody out there. Go ahead. I'm going to do a final statement. Uh, I would compare fan fiction to kind of when a field lies fallow and everything's just kind of uh, percolating inside. That's kind of fan fiction stirs up the grounds of the things that I want to do as original. It's the wildflowers of the world. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's letting something grow wild and free and then you can prune it and turn it into something amazing and, you know. And I've become very well, proud of some of my fan fics. Same here. <laughs> In, I but, still stand by my Star Wars uh, D&D game. It's been yeah, a great, great learning mm-hmm. experience and relaxing experience. That should have been canon. And canon. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the prequels. I, I will say um, I'm going to agree with what you just said because I'm sorry Paramount with the reboots of Star Trek being so far away from what used to be known as Star Trek. I think you've created feral or fallow ground. Actually created feral. Simon <laughs> Pegg told us to wait. Huh? That there's more Star Trekiness. In the new, oh, no, I thought I thought he said that he had to apologize because they took it out. No, no, no. He That's... said just wait. He said okay. that the the ori- what you saw in the trailer. He was equally horrified by the Beastie Boys track as everyone else yes, was. Yes, and that there is more trekkiness in the next movie. Okay, there could be with less trekkiness. That so. said, <laughs> with that said, nevertheless, this is what I'm going to say about fanfic. I'm not going to say don't do it, and I'm not going to say do it. I'm going to say it's like playing with a Roman candle. <laughs> you can hold it in your hand and hope to God it doesn't blow up in your face. <laughs> it, in a lot of cases, the Roman candle does. So just remember. Are you ending on that? <laughs> I am ending <laughs> on, on the child name. End, end on the Roman candle Gatling gun video that is popping around town because if you create the Roman candle Gatling gun, somebody's going to pick it up and turn it into something awesome that might be Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> You never know. I have no idea how to even <laughs> comment to that Look one. Look it up. Roman Candle Gatling Gun. Okay. What I'm going to say is... <laughs> what I want to say is fan fiction is fun, is great. I understand the, I understand the desires, but it also has its dangers, and you need to be aware of them. Okay. And with that, have a great week writing. Please write. Please continue to write. And also, don't forget about contest. the contest that was mentioned earlier. You only have until the end of the 31st to submit. Thank you. Have a great week writing. The new theme songs for Right Pack Radio were written and performed by Meredith Tate. All copyrights remain with her. Right Pack Radio would like to thank STL Books for allowing us to record in their office. STL Books is an online bookstore specializing in new and used high-quality literature, children's books, and books written by or about St. Louis. Please visit them online at www.stlbooks.com or find their store on the Amazon.com website.